Hi, and welcome back to the very last video in the OWASP series. It's called Insufficient Locking and Monitoring. So let's go down to this. So I have a source link as usual. Some of like my slideshows does not, but if you just go to OWASP.org and, and uh, search for the project called OWASP Top 10, it's pretty easy to see. All right, so Insufficient Locking and Monitoring. So what is all this about? Whenever you have, let's say, a, a web application or service and let's say you're getting hacked or someone is misusing your functionality in some way, this is of course just one example out of many. How would you find out what really happened? Now, you have to do this called incident response. It's the same thing if someone breaks into your house and if, if you had no surveillance or no way of of knowing what happened, well, then you don't know. Of course, you can see a physical lock might be broken, which leads to the conclusion that a lock got broken. So in IT systems, let's say that you're getting brute forced and you have no idea what really happened. You just know that your application had some breach and you lost some data or some people lost their profile, so they got hijacked by some hackers, but you have no idea how they got their hands into the profiles. If you had a log, you could see in the log a lot of entries with the same IP, I, I guess, um, with very short amount of time, like a non-human amount of how fast can you type type time. So this is something that we need to uh, log and create a log for it. And in, in many systems like Apache and the programming language you're creating, there are already abstraction layers or functionalities for you to use to implement these features. So how common is this? It is fairly common on most servers. Um, and why is that? The problem basically is that um, most services, uh, servers or whatever you're using are configured to fit the most which basically means that you need to configure it when you install it. It is pre-configured to like a standard configuration and that is most, most likely not a secure or the most optimal sol solution configuration for your context that your system is running in. So you have to configure whatever you have installed, basically. Um, If you go and read the news on different security websites here and there and commonly, I guess, you will see some reports suggesting or talking about that many servers, websites, systems, and so on lag locking and monitoring. This is just something that I, I wanted to mention. Smaller companies is, um, well, they, they might not do a lot because they are on a budget they have a little time and they need to compete with bigger companies. So they just speed everything up to like a very, very fast pace in order to get the most sales or the most customers or whatever ticks their company. So how to fix these? Um, well, installed services that can monitor logs. So if you don't have logs enabled, and when you, you create some logs whenever you have a, let's say a brute force attack and th this is the, this is my this is maybe a trick question how would you do that you can do it in code for example and you you read uh, from a timestamp that someone tries to log in and whatever the same ip try again to log in and it's very fast if they do that three times or let's say five times within very small amount of seconds it's probably not a human being. Then you could time out the IP address and say like, well, it's probably not the real owner. Why would the real owner do that? So never log out the actual account because if the real owner then tries to log in and notice that the account is locked down, that is actually a denial of service attack then. So you may never and you should never lock down a whole account but you should do it based on the IP address. And the most easy fix is to just to enable logs. So if you have, let's say an option saying log false, log true, or enable, disable, set it to enable. And it is not just 
as easy as that because in many occasions you need to after configure what is being logged and so on. Of course, if there is a config file where you can enable logs, it is most, most likely just a server or a service or some program running. You also need to do it in your code. So you need to identify the critical areas in your application where you execute critical functions. Um, let's say locking in, locking out, creating new password, recovering your old account, um, making alterations to your account and so on and so on. You know, these kind of things are considered um, critical functions and there is a pretty good chance that you might need to log it. But th this is where you need to create a really good risk assessment and think about it in your team. So I want to say thanks for watching the top 10 OWASP series that I created here for YouTube. And the next project I'm going to do will be about OWASP ASVS. I hope you liked the video. I hope you will subscribe and I see you again online. Bye. Thank you.